Welcome to the daily word for the feast of Saint Nicholas. Today's reading is from the first letter to Timothy, chapter six, verses six to eleven. Of course, there is great gain in godliness combined with contentment, for we brought nothing into the world, so that we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with these. But those who want to be rich fall into temptations and are trapped by many senseless and harmful desires that plunges people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil, and in their eagerness to be rich, some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many pains. But as for you, man of God, shun all these. Pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, gentleness. This is the word of the Lord. The real Santa Claus. Today is the feast of Saint Nicholas. Nicholas may not be a name that immediately rings a bell for some of us. But if we refer to him as Santa Claus, then we can hear those name bells jingling, ring tingle tingling too. We immediately recognize the name. Yes, that's right. Saint Nicholas is the original Santa Claus. European immigrants brought the story of Saint Nicholas with them to America in the 19th century. Clement Clark Moore's poem. Account of visits from Saint Nicholas in 1820 transformed Saint Nicholas into a jolly old elf who flew eight reindeers in the sky and climbed down chimneys to deliver gifts. In 1881, the cartoonist Thomas Last dressed Saint Nicholas in a white furred, trimmed red coat, and since the real Saint Nicholas. Has transformed into a fairy tale Santa Claus. The real story of Saint Nicholas' story has since been alliterated by large-scale marketing campaigns. The truth has been taken over by consumerism, and shopping has become a major part of the festivities. Today's scripture reading from the first epistle to Timothy is a timely reminder to us. Describing the true character of the saints, as the scriptures say, Saint Nicholas was a godly and contented man. He knows very well that he has brought nothing into the world at the time of his birth, and he cannot take anything with him. Although he was born into wealth and privilege in Turkey, his parents' death, when he was young, brought him under the care of his uncle, a bishop. He raised young Nicholas in the church, cultivating in him the characters of godliness, obedience, and contentment. Nicholas inherited his large inheritance after he came of age, and became the bishop of Myra, Turkey. He was devout and did not escape the great persecution of the Roman Emperor Diocletian in 303 A.D. He was arrested and tortured in prison. Despite being beaten several times, he didn't waver in his faith, and he even stood up to defend other prisoners who were unfairly accused. It was not until year 306, when Roman Emperor Constantine took reign, that Nicholas was finally released and returned to Myra. To continue his church ministry, in the Ecumenical Council held in Lycian in 325 A.D., he contributed to refuting the heretical Arius thoughts and defending the divinity of the Son of Christ. We can see that Saint Nicholas was a man of God, and he fully exalted the qualities of pursuing righteousness, godliness, faith. An endurance in today's scripture reading. As for the contentment, love, 
gentleness mentioned in the scriptures, Saint Nicholas did that exactly by not enriching himself with his inheritance. Instead, he used his wealth to purchase gifts, food, and other supplies for the poor and needy. He knows that the love of money is the root of all evil. People who are greedy for money are easy to fall into temptation, led astray from the faith to corruption and perdition, harming themselves and others. On the contrary, the pious and contented Saint Nicholas knows how to love God and love others, and share what he has. With those in need, there was a poor widower who was unable to prepare a dowry for his three daughters, so they could not marry into normal families. He feared that one day they would become slave girls. Bishop Lincolnus had his family in mind, and according to one account, he threw a bag of gold through the poor family's window. Another account had him throw down his bag of gold down the chimney, with the big lining in a stocking on the mantelpiece. This became part of the Santa Claus story. During Advent, with Christmas approaching, may we look deeper into the Santa Claus decorations at storefronts and see the Christian example of Saint Nicholas. Behind the appearance of Saint Claus, let us have a time of reflection. What appears on the outside may not be real; it may obscure the rich meaning within. Are we easily deceived by appearances in our daily life? How can we see more deeply, look into the truth? How do you look at money, on a scale of one to ten, one being greed for money, and ten for contention? What score would you give yourself? This is great gain in combining godliness and contentment. We see from the example of Saint Nicholas. That it not only enriches the spiritual life of the individual, but also is a blessing to be the community. How can we practice godliness and begin to live contented lives? Let us pray, Almighty God. Whose will it is to be glorified in your sins, and who raised up your servant's nakedness to be a light in the world, shine, we pray, in our hearts, that we also in our generation may show forth your praise, who called us out of darkness into your marvelous light, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.